Hey everybody, how we all doing today? Happy New Year. Today we are going to dive into, well, I think something that all of you have heard about, all of you have explored at some point, but at the end of the day, maybe came away feeling overwhelmed and just didn't want to go there at this period of time in your playing. And that thing is triads. Okay, look, triads don't have to be intimidating. All they are is a chord, and they're a three-note chord. That's it. It couldn't really get any easier than that, right? But what's happening here is, in many cases, we have to learn how to play new chord shapes. So, of course, now there's a learning curve, right? But when you see how everything is kind of related to the chord shapes you already know, well, really, then it just becomes, where do I play these chord shapes? Because you're already playing them in your everyday playing, right? So, look, a lot of times when you learn or look at a new technique, no matter what it is, you might understand it, okay? But then when you go to put it to the guitar, your finger, you're just not, hey, you're back to square one. You're a beginner again. So don't let this discourage you because I promise you, in most cases, within an hour or two, because you already have your guitar foundation, you've already got some experience and confidence, you're learning something new, but you've got all those resources at your fingertips that you didn't have when you first learned your very first C chord or D chord, right? Where it was really a struggle to figure out where to put your fingers and how to play the darn thing, okay? Now, here you don't have that because you've got all this experience. So your learning curve is gonna be real quick. In fact, for me, when I first, which I'm gonna show you how I did this, when I first started taking on triads, literally within, well, the first night, I was strumming them quite fluidly and changing in between different triads in my first night, okay? So even if it takes you a few nights or a few days, that's a lot, you're a lot further ahead than when you first started playing, right? So let's take a look at what triads are. That's the first thing. What is a triad? Okay, so a triad is basically just a three-note chord. Now, if you're saying to yourself, oh, wow, that's now I got to learn, oh, no, okay? All the chords that you play are three-note chords. The only difference is in some chords, you're playing those notes twice or multiple times, or you're playing some of those notes multiple times. Now, let me explain. Let's take our everyday, run-of-the-mill, out-of-the-box G major chord, okay? Let's take a look at what we're fretting here. We're fretting a G, which is your root, right? Which is the lowest root, okay? You're fretting a B, right? Right here. And you're playing, as your, as your pick goes down, you're playing that open D string. Now, if we were to just keep this shape and play those first three strings, or should say four, five, and six, the, the closest strings to you, and only those strings, that's a triad. You've just played a G triad. The rest of these strings are redundant. We don't play them. Now let's take a look what those strings are that we're not playing. All right, so we have our G, we have our B, and we have our D, and that makes up the G chord, right? The first note, the, the third note, and the fifth note. Those are your triads, and that also makes up your G chord. So your triads are the first, third, and the fifth note of any chord. Now, we're playing it this way, D. Now, if we continue our pick down, what do we pick? We pick an open G, we pick an open B, right? G, B, so we're repeating the process, and the only difference is, if we fret our G right here, then we're repeating the G, okay? And if not, and we play through, we're playing an open E. But we're taught to at least fret this right here, okay? Now, if you play two fingers down on your G, which many people do, well, now you're just repeating the D note from the open D string. So you see, you're just repeating certain notes. So if we eliminate the top end and just play those three notes, that's a triad. Now, 
triads are played over three strings, one note per string. So we can play triads on the first three strings and only the first three strings, one, two, and three. We can play them over two, three, and four. We can play them over three, four, and five, and we can play them over four, five, and six. So there's a lot of possibilities. Think about this. And on each three set, three string set, we could play multiple triads in various chords. So right away you're thinking, oh my God, I'm gonna have to learn 30 more new shapes or 27 more shapes or whatever it is. And well, no, because a lot of the shapes that you're gonna learn are shapes you're already playing and you can slide those shapes up and down to create more chords. So in many cases, one shape will get you six chords, right? So that's the beauty of this. Here we go. So that's a triad, right? So remember, a triad is only three notes and it is the root note, the third note, and the fifth note. Again, what does that mean? All right, so if we're using G for an example, so in the, in the chord of G, G note would be your first note. A would be the second because it goes up two frets, G to A. Two more frets, right? Remember ordering the pizza, two, two, one, two, 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 one. So A to B is two. I'm sorry, G to A is two. A to B is two. B to C is one. So our notes would be G, right? A is two. B is three, C is four, and up more, up two more is D is five. And we need the one, which is G, we need the three, which is the B, and we need the five note, which is the D. So our triad is G, B, and D. And that's the same for every chord, right? First note, third note, fifth note. Now you don't have to play them in that order. So in other words, ideally a triad, the root note is the, the lowest note, the one closest to you, just like when we play open chords. But we can switch those around on different strings and play, instead of it going say G, B, D in this case, we could go D, B, G and play those three notes together and that is a G triad, but it's called an inversion. So when the root note of the triad is not the lowest one, it's an inversion. And there are two inversions. There's a second and third inversion, right? So that's all that means. Same three notes, we can just play them differently or upside down or inside out as long as we play only those three notes, one note per string. And open strings count. So in other words, if the note that we need is an open string under the other two strings, we play that. And that counts as the note. So, not that difficult yet, right? Okay, so now let's put it to use and let's see how it can help you as a guitar player. And I'm gonna show you how I started to learn triads. Here we go. All right, so I'll tell you right off the bat, the most, I don't know if the word's popular, but the mostly played triads, for the most part, are the triads that are played on strings one, two, and three. And that's because, let's face it, a lot of electric guitar players, lead players, they use triads as the basis of their solos a lot, right? And, well, again, electric guitar, I mean, you're always playing on, you're just playing high and up here, and you're playing on these, these thin strings all the time. So it kind of makes sense, right? But that doesn't mean that's right for you. So here's the strategy that I used to bring triads into my arsenal. And I decided I was gonna do it just like everything else, just by kind of introducing one or two things at a time, getting comfortable, getting really, really, really proficient playing these things, and then bring in a few different ones, okay? So let me show you what I mean. So we're gonna look at the triads on strings two, three and four, okay? So that's basically an A major chord, right? So there's your two, three, four, plus we play that, that open A, right? We strum right through the guitar. And there's our A major chord, right? Okay, now, once we leave 
this bass, right? We're only going to play the strings that we're fretting. So that's the three strings and only the three strings. So there's our A major. Now, to burst into triads. Now, in the key of A, we're going to play, just to show you, every chord that's in that key using a triad and how it all sort of works, okay? So here's my A major shape. Now, the next chord in the key, right, would be the B. In this case, the B is the, of obviously the second chord, so it would have to be minor. Remember, one, four, five are always major. So this has to be a B minor. So if I move my A, which I've talked about this in other videos, right, to avoid playing the B bar chord, and if I move that shape up two frets, and I only play those three strings that I'm fretting, okay? Then I have a B chord or a B triad. A, up two, play those three strings as B. The only problem with that is B major is not a key in the key of A. The actual B chord is a minor because it's the second chord in the progression and we know that only the one, four, fives are majors. So what do we do? Well, in technical terms, technical terms, we have to flatten out, we have to flatten out the note, the one note, right? To make it a minor. So what we do is we flatten this note out by bringing it back, right? But now we can't finger it with the three fingers like that because we gotta play this note back here. But see, now here's where it all gets connected. So I gotta bring this finger back and fret these two like that. Now what do I have? I have an A minor shape, moved up two frets. So now I have A minor, this is my, this is my open chord A minor and I'm gonna strum the A, but now once I leave that bass, I just strum the chords that I'm fretting and I got a B minor. That's a B minor triad. And it's the second chord in the key of A. So now I know a triad. I know that if I'm playing an A and I need a B minor, there's my A minor shape. That's it. We already play that shape. We just play it here all the time. So that's why I was saying, uh, like after an hour or so of doing this, okay, you're going to be able to, you're going to be able to make that A minor shape here. If you had a capo here, well, how easy would it be to make that B minor shape? Because you're used to playing up against the nut. You just got to get that out of your head and realize that I got to play my B minor shape here. That's B minor. And as per the scale and the, and the key, if we go up two more, we slide that shape up, we have a C sharp minor. B minor. Now, you hear it's musical, it may not be a song that you know, but it's musical because remember, any time you play within a key, you can play any chord in any order and it will sound, well, musical <laughs> because that's why they're in the same key, the same family, because they all sound good together. So I could literally sit here Sorry, that was a C sharp or a C. So look, I. this is what we can do, right? This is triads. So we've gone, we've learned two things today. We've learned that this A minor shape played here is a B minor and we slide it up. So now we've played the first, the second, and the third chord of the A key, right? A is the, 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 the number one chord, number two is B minor, number three is a C sharp minor, because it's two up from the B minor. And if we go two up again, we're gonna have a D chord. Now this, we switch back to the A shape. And we just play those three. There's your D, and of course if we go up two more, there's our E. Now, for the next chord in the key is an F sharp minor, right? Because two from E is an F sharp minor. 
So it's a minor. So what does that mean? We got to whip out that e, that A minor shape again. So in this case, it's the next fret. We make our e, A minor again. Here's our A minor. C. F sharp minor. Now here, the frets get really close together, so it gets really difficult. Got to be really on this because you don't want any of these to, you know, move out of their frets. But I'm going to tell you right now, I wouldn't. I'm going to show it to you, but I, I wouldn't ever play this. I don't think unless I was doing something up here and it was right, like right there, I would play the F sharp minor somewhere else. I'd probably play it here. Um, but there's other places as well on other strings. And that's the whole idea of this. I'm going to show you everything bit by bit. And then you're going to take little bits that suit your playing, not my playing, your playing. So here's our F sharp. And just to be thorough, the next would be a G sharp, which is a diminished chord. It's the last chord in this key. And it's kind of funky. It's a D shape played on just those same strings, right? Strings two, three, and four. And after that, where are we? We're back to A. Well, remember, the fretboard does like repeat itself. So we go two frets and we make that A again. Those three, same here, A, A. And there's our A octave higher. Now, if you don't have a cutaway guitar, and maybe, or you have a short scale guitar, well, you ain't gonna go there anyways because you're not gonna be able to. So, you know, I, again, Part of learning the guitar as quickly as possible for me was eliminating, once I knew what to eliminate from what I have to spend and waste time on. And those are right there in a perfect example. I will never play F sharp here. It's good to know, but I'm not gonna play it. I will never play this D here, or G here, or G sharp here, okay? And I don't ever foresee playing that. Okay, although this, believe it or not, is probably one that I would play more than the other two. So therefore, you know, I'm just gonna stop at the E. All right, so now we've played in triad form every chord, right? From A, the key of A, in triad form. And we've decided that we like everything right to the E. So let's go a step further now. Let's just play or focus on the one, the five, and the four, or the one, four, five, okay? Because at the end of the day, yeah, B minor is usable, but I I don't know about the C sharp minor if I use that very often, okay? So I'm not really gonna worry about it. And then we got this D and we got this lovely E here. So D, E, E, A. So look what we can do now. So that's the same as playing. It's the same as playing that in an open position. So we've just played a chord progression using triads. All right, so I can tell you it only gets better from here. So in part two of this video, what we're gonna look at is what information I took from this lesson, all right? And how I applied that to the way I played guitar at the time of learning this, okay? And then more importantly, I'll show you how I kept going to continue to build on my triads and slowly integrate them into my guitar playing repertoire, right? So I'm at the point now where I don't know every triad and I don't play most of them. But the ones that I do play, I play them quite well and I know them very well. And that, like everything I've ever shown you with a guitar, is so much more important to know a few things really well than to know everything kind of, well, part way, okay? So watch for part two on triads and in the meantime, remember, hey, just play your guitar. That's the only way you're going to get better.